Shisha Pangma is one of the great Himalayan peaks and is the 14th tallest mountain in the world. Standing at a height of 8,027 meters at its true summit, it is one of the least frequented 8,000 meter peaks by mountaineers. Much like another one of the 8,000ers I covered in one of my previous videos, Manaslu, many of Shisha Pangma's claimed summits have been contested, as only 165 summit claims have been verified to have actually reached the mountain's true summit rather than the lower summit, as reaching the mountain's true summit requires crossing a precarious, thin ridge which can take upwards of an hour to navigate across. The first verified summit of Shisha Pangma was completed in 1964 by a Chinese-led expedition which reached the summit on May the 2nd, making it the last of the 14 8,000 meter peaks in the world to be successfully summited. The reason for this relatively late first ascent had less to do with its technical difficulty and more to do with its location, as it is the only one of the Himalayan 8,000 meter peaks that is located entirely in China, who did not allow foreign mountaineers access to the mountain due to the ongoing political turmoil in Tibet, a topic which I covered more in depth in my video about Nongpa Law if you'd like to know more about it. When compared to the other 8,000 meter Himalayan peaks, Shisha Pengma has relatively gentle slopes, which give it a reputation as one of the easier 8,000ers, but its less steeply inclined slopes create ideal conditions for fearsome, massive, sweeping avalanches that crash down the mountain's faces regularly. In the late Himalayan climbing season of 1999, a group of seasoned mountaineers and skiers set out for Shisha Pengma with the intention of summiting the peak and then skiing their way down afterwards. This expedition group was assembled in order to create a movie about their endeavor. The film's expedition team of nine included skiers and Himalayan novices Hans Sari and Chris Erickson, a high-altitude cameraman named David Bridges, and two high-caliber mountaineers, Alex Lowe and Conrad Anker. The team departed from Kathmandu in early September and had established their base camp by the beginning of October. After they had established their base camp, the group then began the process of acclimatization, resting at base camp and making short trips to the mountain slopes to establish their climbing route and scout out their planned ski lines. On the morning of October 5th, 1999, the members of the team split into two groups for the day's acclimatization activities. Alex Lowe, Conrad Anker and David Bridges, the most experienced mountaineers of the expedition, would be breaking the trail to the summit, exploring their planned route, while the skiers would scout out and theorize about their planned descent route, opting to make their way from base camp to the snow line in order to get a closer look. Later that day, in the early afternoon, the skiers spotted the trio of Anker, Lowe, and Bridges making their way across a crevasse field and towards the skiers, across the large, gently sloped glacier. Suddenly, the loud and ominous crack of an avalanche rang out through the air from above. Both the trio of climbers on the glacier and the group of skiers below them quickly spotted the avalanche, which was a small slide caused by a small cornice that broke from an upper ridge. The trio on the glacier watched the avalanche for a few moments seemingly deliberating whether or not they would need to take evasive action or whether the small slide would peter out before reaching them. However, the avalanche continued to make its way downwards and began to cascade over several cliff bands which rapidly intensified the avalanche's size and might. After witnessing this sudden escalation, Low, Bridges, and Anchor began to scramble to avoid being swept up by the now massive avalanche but were unsuccessful in their endeavor, and after sweeping up the trio on the glacier, the avalanche continued to thunder down the slope, sweeping up the group of skiers that were doing their route reconnaissance. The skiers, caught in the tail end of the slide, emerged from the debris soon after the snow had settled, and expeditiously made their way to higher ground in order to search for any sign of the trio. Soon, they spotted a figure making their way across what had been a crevasse field, which now had been completely covered by the avalanche, and one of the skiers, a man named Andrew McLean, made his way towards the figure. 
who turned out to be Conrad Anchor. Anchor told McLean, They're gone. Alex and David are gone. Since none of the trio on the glacier had been wearing avalanche locator beacons, the rest of the team scoured the debris field throughout the rest of the afternoon, but were met with no success in locating neither Alex Lowe nor David Bridges, and were forced to halt their search until the following morning after they had run out of daylight. By the following morning, hopes were running low, as it was extremely likely that neither of the men had survived the night. Regardless, a search team was formed to find the missing men and began to comb the debris of the avalanche, searching for any trace of them. However, after nearly a week of searching the debris field, the search for the men's bodies was called off, and the planned film and ascent of the mountain were abandoned by the devastated surviving members of the expedition team. In the aftermath of the incident, the expedition team was criticized for their seemingly lax safety procedures, as had the men been carrying an avalanche locator beacon, they could have been much more easily located. However, the expedition team members refuted this criticism by pointing out that the trio were on a very gently sloped glacier and seemingly at minimal risk of being hit by an avalanche, which the three men, who were all highly experienced mountaineers, were clearly aware of. Ultimately, however, the fault of their untimely demise could not be placed with any one person or entity, as avalanches are a constant and often arbitrary inherent risk that mountaineers must brave to reach their goal of summiting. In memory of the fallen climbers, a memorial to the men was erected at the Shisha Pengma Southwest Base Camp. In the years following the disaster, the surviving member of the trio from the glacier, Conrad Anker, has become well known and respected throughout the mountaineering community and has earned a reputation for his cautious approach for summiting mountains, having learned from the painful lessons that took the lives of his friends that fateful October afternoon. Anchor, who was stricken with grief following the expedition, formed a bond with Alex Lowe's widow, and the pair were married in 2001, and Anchor took the role as a father figure to Lowe's three sons. Later, Lowe's widow and Conrad Anchor started a charity bearing his name in his honor, the Alex Lowe Charitable Foundation. I'll leave a link to their website in the video's description if you'd like to know more about that. In early May of 2016, the renowned Swiss mountaineer Uli Steck, a name you might recognize if you're familiar with mountaineering or have watched my Annapurna video, and his climbing partner David Gottler were acclimatizing to the altitude in preparation for their upcoming Shisha Pengma summit bid, weaving their way through the crevasse field on the glacier, when they just so happened to cross the remains of Alex Lowe, peeking out from the glacier's melting ice, with his body having been well preserved enough from the freezing temperatures that he was still recognizable more than 16 years after being swept up by the avalanche. Following this discovery, Lowe's body was recovered from the glacier and his family was able to give him a proper burial, a relatively rare occasion for those who have lost loved ones to the wrath of the mountains. David Bridges' body has never been recovered. Thank you all for watching.